Hey everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to answer another common question that comes up a lot in comments on the channel and in real life. Can you overdose on inhalers? Can you take too much of an inhaler? Well, to be honest, it's quite hard, but it is possible. So if you really, really want to, you can do it. It's not usually the overdose in the sense that you might uh, have very, very significant effects, but you may feel really unwell. It's just because inhalers, generally things, especially things like this, which is a Ventolin inhaler, this is a Ventolin inhaler, it's a salbutamol inhaler, it can act as a little bit of a stimulant. So if you take too many puffs of this, you will probably get a little bit jittery. So this is what usually happens generally if you take inhalers. Now, obviously, if you have a heart condition, uh, especially if you're prone to getting abnormal heart rhythms, it may not be the best idea to take too many puffs of an inhaler. However, there is always a risk versus benefit ratio. So your doctor is the best person to ask about how many puffs you should take of an inhaler because your case may be different. So I cannot, in these videos, tell you exactly what you need to do. You need to always check with your doctor in your own individual case. So please, please do that. Then, if you've done that, they may have recommended, for example, in the case of blue inhalers such as Ventolin, to take maybe six to eight puffs a day maximum. This is a usual recommendation. Your doctor may recommend something different. But generally, if you take a lot of them, you will probably get a little bit jittery. And like I said before, there can be some issues related to people who have heart conditions because they may change a little bit about uh, the balance of your electrolytes in your body. So it's something to keep in mind. But it's that being said, it's quite hard. So you need to take a lot of puffs generally in rapid succession, maybe five, ten puffs in one go until you st really start to feel that effect. I wouldn't urge you to experiment. So please, <laughs> because I know some people like to try their medications in different ways, try to play around with the medications. Do follow your doctor's recommendations at all times. They know you. They know the risks in your case. So especially if you're younger and you're suffering with asthma, you may feel that you're quite invincible. And this is something that's great. But always bear in mind that the asthma can be very bad for you as well. But also, taking too much of your inhaler can also be bad for you. So try to find the right balance. Now, if you're having a severe asthma attack, you may need to take a lot of puffs from an inhaler to cut that attack. And that is reasonable. That is one situation where the limit is not uh, as strictly enforced because you need to get out of that bad situation where you're having your asthma attack. So you may be able to use more puffs then. It's really a good idea, though, in those situations, if you do struggle with severe asthma attacks, to talk to your doctor to have an asthma action plan. This is usually a written document, something that you can establish with your doctor, write things down so that you know what to do in case of an asthma attack, because it may be more than just inhalers. If you're trying to use your inhalers and it's not really working, maybe you may need to use some tablets as well. Maybe you need to use a spacer, which is a big little thing that connects to the inhaler to help you improve your technique during the asthma attack because you may not be getting the medication in. Or potentially uh, nebulizers, like I said before. So nebulizers are uh, just these machines in which you put a solution, you press a button and it generates a vapor that you inhale. So that can be helpful in an asthma attack when you're struggling to breathe and you may find it hard to synchronize your breathing with the actuation, the release of the medication from the inhaler. So important to know how to use inhalers correctly. Hard to overdose because the dose inside these things is usually quite low. So you, we don't need a lot of inhaled medication to have an effect on the lungs because it acts locally in most cases. And if you don't take very, very many puffs of the inhaler, much of the medication does not get absorbed in the rest of the body to cause side effects. But like I said before, especially in the case of blue inhalers, you can overdose on them. It may give you the jitters. It may make you, you know, at risk of getting some abnormal heart rhythm if you've really overdone it. Uh, also, for people who have heart disease, ischemic heart disease, again, there may be a little bit of a risk. But always talk to your doctor. Try to figure out what's best in your case. And I'm sorry to keep repeating this um, ad nauseum, but it's really important. The other thing would be whether you would uh, be using other inhaled 
medications. So for example, you may be using combination inhalers that also contain, besides a stimulant medication that opens up the airways, a bronchodilator, it may contain inhaled corticosteroids. So in those situations with inhaled corticosteroids, it's again very hard to overdose because the dose is very low. So even, it's much, much less than you would find in a tablet of steroids, of prednisolone, for example, that you would swallow. So you would have to take a lot of puffs to even get to one tablet that you have prednisolone that you would swallow. So this is really, really important to note. So if your doctor has recommended taking quite a lot of puffs of your inhaler to treat, for example, your asthma, to control your asthma more uh, correctly, then that's probably okay. So it's unlikely that you will overdose on the corticosteroid from the inhaler. The other type of medication that can be sometimes included in inhalers is uh, something um, which is derived from ipratropium. So basically this is a muscarinic uh, agent. So something that uh, can be used as a bronchodilator, but it acts in a different way than the blue inhaler, the salbutamol uh, inhalers. So in those situations, again, you can overdose on those, especially if you have an atrovent inhaler, which contains ipratropium or maybe spiriva. And if you take too many puffs or inhalations, it may actually cause some problems. Sometimes people who suffer with glaucoma or people who have uh, significant prostate issues may, uh, may have um, experienced some difficulties if overdosing on these inhalers. For example, the glaucoma can get a little bit worse or sometimes you may have urine retention if you are overdoing these um, uh, muscarinic agents. So really, these are nuances now. This I'm getting into the, the situation where we're more in the theoretical risks because it's uh, in real life, actually, it's very hard to get to such a dose. But if you are having these issues, if you know you've ha you're having some other health problems, do mention these to your doctor. When you go on inhalers, mention that you suffer potentially with a prostate problem, with glaucoma, potentially with a heart condition, ischemic heart disease, you know, dif difficulties with abnormal heart rhythms. If you've had issues with inhalers in the past, try to consider all these things. If you're getting jitters from your inhalers, try to mention these things, discuss them with your doctor because they may adjust the treatment in your case. And there are so many inhalers on the market these days that you can probably figure out a solution together with your doctor. I hope this was helpful. Please do not worry too much about using inhalers. As long as you're using them correctly as prescribed, you should be fine in most situations. If you're having any problems, feedback to your doctor to try to find a better solution that's optimal in your case. Hope this was helpful. Wish you all the best and good health.